today is a good day it's a beautiful day to be alive and it's a beautiful day to have you watch us you know we really appreciate you and we appreciate your feedback highly appreciate your feedback across the social media handle <laughs> but uh, thank you very much for having me here. I'm really humbled. Like uh, for me to be sitting right here, I'm so humbled. Mm -hmm. uh, my name's. Uh And I was like, oh, maybe I'm going to come in one Do music, uh, hobby, not as a prophet, but as evangelizing. Mm. I'm an evangelist. Later when I didn't imagine what I'm here and talking about music. I <laughs> I didn't know what was happening to me because I had ulcers. I mean, I've had chronic ulcers. Sick ulcers because all the time. Uh, there's this uh, particular time when they became very severe, it was collapsing and not just they like did uh, maybe I should seek a bit, I mean, like uh, more, more opinion from other doctors. I was sent to a cardiologist after mm. <laughs> um, and you know I'd been waiting for him for like the whole morning, so he looked told me, oh, I'm going to Sana. I was like, well, I'm here. Okay. Now, uh, 
and he tells me, uh, and uh, you have to go for an open heart surgery. I'm not sick. I, I have ulcers, and I, I really want to go home because nobody knows I'm here. I just came to for a checkup, and he. Goes, okay, uh, and if you're not going to, I mean, uh, and if you're not going to, you have to give a some money. Oh, we, we, we start the operation because mm -hmm. it has to be immediately. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm looking at him and he goes, you have to give a deposit of 500,000 shillings. Child? I was like, 500? I mean, like, Ooh. I mean, like, you just walk in yeah. and somebody's sending you 500,000. I told him, I don't have that kind of money. Hey, I love who he's like, right now. Yeah. Then patient yet you have not treated me so what am i signing that uh, um i mean what am i signing and he goes no you have to sign i told him no i'm not signing let me go <laughs> home there come back i mean like why is he forcing me to sign i'm not his patient then i thought yeah. maybe he wants to hold me because of the five hundred thousand. <laughs> he wants to yeah, I get yeah it. i was like no i'm not but i'm you know i'm a bit scared <laughs> then he goes okay because i was really sick and my breathing was being compromised and then he goes, okay, now uh, you have to, no, you have to take, th take this medication, then you come back. I looked at him, I told him, oh, excuse me, sir, uh, can I please have something to sleep? Because all this time I couldn't sleep. Um, for like two weeks I could not close my eyes, so I was really tired, my body was shivered, I was really bad. And he goes, uh, he looks at me, and I told him, can I have some medication like, to make me sleep a bit? I just want just... One minute sleep only. I just close my eyes. Looks at me and uh, like, hmm. if you make it by Monday, I was like, eh? I was like, yeah, if you make it by Monday, then we can. You know, I looked at him and I was so scared. Then I just a voice just came to me. I said, I will sign those papers. Bring them here. I'll sign them. <laughs> and I signed them. I told them give them to me. I'm going. No, I was really scared. Mm -hmm. I took the prescription and I went away. No, I, but I was so scared. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was like, okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm dying because I was really sick and I couldn't breathe. And you know when uh, you can't breathe, I mean, that's life. Mm. I mean, breathing is life and if you can't breathe. So I just uh, took my car and I was driving slowly towards home wondering, okay, what do I do? So I called my brother. My brother lives here in Nairobi. And I told him, okay, my brother is called Jeff. I was like, Jeff, uh, I've been given three days to live. I'm not well. He goes, no, 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 you come to Nairobi. I was like, okay, I'll come. But uh, for now, let me go home and rest a bit. Because I, I was really sick, mm -hmm. and as I was driving, I was, uh, uh, I was uh, sweating profusely, and uh, my hands were, you know, I, have, I had sharp pains in my hands. My, you know, I was really feeling bad, mm -hmm. and I was sweating. I didn't know that when you sweat, you know, like when you're having mm -hmm. a heart attack, the, your body sweats. It's like somebody has poured water on you. So all, those time, all that time I was um, fainting and being unconscious, those were mild heart attacks. It was not just uh, being unconscious. So that's why the fifth time it was really bad. So I went back home and uh, with my, I went, my, I called a friend of mine. I tell people, I told people here and there, bye, 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 like you guys, bye. And I was Ooh. thinking, yeah, because I was really feeling bad. Like you're thinking, you're actually thinking you're going. Yeah, because I couldn't breathe. Oh, wow. And the pain was too severe. You know, like when, you have a, when you're having a heart attack or when the heart has a problem, everything inside seems to be crumpling. So I really mm. thought, this is it. I called a few people, like, like my best is like, you guys, bye. I'm, I'll keep, Carol, you're joking. I said, no, I'm not joking. Like, you guys, are, bye. And they, you know, then I'm like, uh, then my friend told me, no, Carol, where are you? I said, I'm driving. She told me, just stop there. So she came, picked me up, and then now we went and got medication. And uh, I'm like, do I need the medication? I'm dying. And the, the I mean, the chemist, uh, uh, ladies were like, don't worry, if he gave you medication, that means there's, there's a solution somewhere. Just go and take the medication and, you know, you'll be well. But I didn't say it. So those three days, I was really scared. But uh, Monday came, I was looking at myself, oh, okay, I'm still there. Okay. Then, then I tried to, like, confess and, like, repent. Like, Jesus, forgive me, because when you <laughs> die, you, <laughs> you have to repent. I had then I had no, people, I, bye. Yeah, I've told people, bye, I'm trying to repent. <laughs> I'm trying to remember what I've done, which is so bad that God, I mean, I want to go to heaven, like, hey. <laughs>
but I can't oh, even, wow. I can't, you know, I can't, uh, I, there's no, there's, I can't talk. I mean, the pain is too much. So I was just like, God, even if I'm not saying how, I mean, how I'm not, I'm confessing, I'm doing it in my mind. Just listen to me, you know, like, I'm sorry, I did this. I'm like, what did I do wrong with you? Let me go to hell. Anyway, Monday came, and then I went, I said, okay, I was still alive. And mm -hmm. I thought maybe now I should go to Nairobi. So I went, uh, I went to the bank so that I can pick some money and, you know, so I couldn't climb the stairs. So I called the bank manager, like, help me here. He comes and he says, Carol, what's happening? Because I really looked bad. So I, I explained to him and he told me, just go home. Just go home, we will. I will do anything, everything for you. Because I really looked bad. I'd lost weight. I had changed. I was gray. You know, I just looked terrible. Um, so uh, I went home and then he calls me and tells me, OK, there's a doctor who is also a banker here with us. and." Um, I've told him your situation and he wants you to come and see him, like immediately. I was like, okay, fine. But then I was like, do I go? I mean, after all, I'm dying. What's the point of seeing another doctor? I was really feeling bad. But I went to the doctor, he, yeah, he examined me, and this one really examined me properly, and I saw he did the ECG, the echo, everything. And I knew, okay, at least I knew whatever he tells me, it will make sense, because he, he has examined me. The other one just looked at the report. So, but the report says a lot, I didn't know. That's when I realized the five times I was unconscious, it was uh, not just, it was, a heart, it was a mild heart attacks. So he looks at me and tells me, lady, I'm so sorry, but uh, from now, kneel to mouth. You have to go to hospital. I, told him, I don't have money, that's the first thing. Because like now, <laughs> you guys are going to ask for money You're again. thinking about your 500. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> although I ended up using more. But then I was like, I don't have money. Mm -hmm. He told me that one will cross the bridge, but right now, Kneel by mouth, you have to be admitted. And uh, just take it slow because we'll do it in the morning. It was in the evening. So I was fine. And the next day, I was on the operating table. As we speak to you now, it is five years down the line. Yeah. I have two stents in my heart. I live in me on medication. But uh, I thank God. You're here. That's what yeah, matters. Yeah, I'm talking about it. <laughs> we give you some tissue. That's why I always have a show. <laughs> Yeah. Sorry. So that's my story. And after that, um, after it took me like two years before I was normal again, because mm -hmm. um, the pain or something in the heart, mm -hmm. it's a foreign thing. So um, it takes time for, for the body to get used. And then later, I, I mean, I, mean I, I went back to, mm -hmm. although it will never be the same again, yeah. it's not normal. Uh, but I still do my stuff here and there. I can't do heavy stuff, but I still do, I still do everything. In, and uh, without knowing, nobody ever knows what the problem is. Yeah. So one day I was just, uh, and then I, I, I was telling God, every day I kept on telling God, thank you. Every day I kept on telling God, thank you. And then uh, this particular, and I kept on saying, I sing. So I was singing and, you know, I started singing, telling God, thank you. And one day I'm driving uh, with uh, one of my sons, like one of somebody who's very close to me. To me, he's like my son. Mm -hmm. And we were going to do some, some project somewhere. And I told him, then I was singing. Then he told, and I tell him, I would love to, to record this song, just to tell God thank you for what he has done to me, because they all know what I went through. Mm -hmm. And he was, he was like, Mom, why don't you go ahead and do it? Just uh, shoot. I said, really? Just record it. No, not shoot. Just record it. I was like, really? He said, yeah, just do it. And I said, OK. The next day, I was in the studio recording my song and telling God thank you. Like, uh, that's my first song I, I wrote called Nashukuru. That is my, my first album. I wrote the song Nashukuru. That was my first song. And uh, the guy, he's called, I mean, I really, he's, he's the backbone of all this. Because mm -hmm. if it wasn't for him, of that conversation we mm -hmm. had in the car, I, I, I wouldn't have gone ahead. Sure. Yeah. So uh, that's how I started. And I really appreciate him. His name is Robert Miser. And he has his uh, fixed productions. He's a, he's a, yeah, he has his own small thing he does, which is really great. And he's the reason why, actually, mm -hmm. I, he encouraged me. And here I am. How have the challenges you faced um, shaped your music? Um, the, the, the greatest challenge I have is health. Because mm -hmm. I really do this and uh, I look strong, but um, sometimes mm -hmm. I'm yeah. in so much pain. And that is the greatest challenge that I've had. And uh, sometimes I'm really challenged. But when I'm out there to sing, I don't even think about it. I just glorify the Lord and all goes on. Yeah. You know, at first it began as um, you trying to thank God for what he has done for you. How has your music grown from that point to now? 
it has really grown because I've done three albums mm. and now I'm working on my fourth album. Um, I've, yeah, so it has really grown because every time I'm sit, I'm, I am like, God, you know, you know, and I'm reading the Bible, I'm praying, I'm like, oh God, you can do this, and this, this can be a good message to people. So, and I make sure that my music is a bit different, it's a sing-along. You know, I hate when I go somewhere and I want to sing somebody's song and I can't get it. So I decided to make my songs very easy so that people can sing along easily. And you know, so my mes my, all of my songs are just messages, messages. Yeah. Ooh. I'm still I'm still in that point of I know <laughs> trying <laughs> trying to absorb to absorb everything. You look you do a lot of things. Mm. You you've mentioned you're a philanthropist, you're a musician, you're a businesswoman. How do you prioritize your work? Well, uh, when it comes to music, I will not I would not uh, it is just like part of me. I work mm -hmm. with it because mm -hmm. I sing everywhere. Whatever I'm doing, I'm singing, I'm singing, and because I don't this as I don't do this as a, I do I do this as a ministry, not as an industry. Me, I'm just evangelizing, you mm -hmm. know, because I'm trying to make people to know out there what God can do. Because actually, He can. You know, mm -hmm. I used to hear things, and you know, God can do. You know, I never believed this. Mm -hmm. He really gave me a second chance. So mm -hmm. what I do, I'm evangelizing. I'm a minister. I'm ministering. So it for me, I don't. That is something that works with me. Then when it comes to the, my reach out project, I just reach out to children in the slums, just like that, like, so it's not heavy at all at me, at, 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 uh, not heavy. And my business, I have a small cultural center where, um, so I don't have to be there. So mm -hmm. I can balance, I balance. But mm -hmm. I'm, I, the first my priority is giving thanks to God and telling people out there what God can do. Ooh. What would you have told your younger self? No, if I had known how sweet it is to sing, I would have started singing those <laughs> things. Because I used to sing a lot, and I, right now I think I, I would have been known all over the world because I would really, I, I love singing. <laughs> but I would really have, yeah, I, sh I wish I knew. What mistakes would you want to correct? Probably you did in your younger years. Oh my God, there are so many. If I start listing up, I, I don't even know where I'll start. There's so, there's, there are many Give us things. one or two. Um, I was never patient. Mm. Very impatient. No. Yeah. Describe the story of my life. Yeah. <laughs> I was very impatient. I wish I was patient. Maybe things would have gone better. I was very impatient. With every decision that I took, I was never patient. So uh, that Carol. You have a song. Miss Awati. <laughs> <laughs> it happens. You yeah. have a song you've released recently. Yes. yes. You want to talk about it as we close up? Yeah, actually this song, you know, the way you described me when I walked in here, you thought I was not Kenyan. Yeah. And everywhere I go, nobody believes I'm Kenyan. I tell them, hey, I'm Kenyan. You know, until I speak that, me now I'm a Luya one. You know, I'm, and I just try to make it like, hey, I'm a Luya. And nobody believes me. I did my first song uh, it's called Calvary. But then uh, it didn't sit. People kept on saying, oh, look at the way you sing. Look at your accent. I'm like, now which accent is this? I tried to tone down. But I said, anyway, sorry, it's just in me. Um, I didn't go to those yeah. schools. Group of I'm just <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so um, uh, I decided, okay, this time I'm going to do a Luya song. You know, Luya song, Kabisa, mm -hmm. like my mother tongue. And uh, the song is called Langa Yesu, like call to Jesus in every situation that you are in. Just call to Jesus, just call on him. Uh, and the song, that's why the song, in Luya it is Langa, call, and Jesus. So it says, call to Jesus in any situation, he will be there. Yeah, and this it's a Luya vibe, so I really want people yeah. to, <laughs> yes. I've seen the vibe is, yes. is a bit yes. Luya. Yeah. That's amazing. Something we should look forward to, a project of music you're doing? Um, just uh, let, uh, let, let me not let the cat out of the bag. It will so be it's a, a surprise. big surprise, yes. Amazing, amazing. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. Unfortunately, we have to wind up this uh, session, Thank but you. I would want you to give your parting shot using that camera. To tell us tell us something, a parting shot, and also give us um, your social media handles where we can find you. Okay. Now, salimiane waluya, manapenda salamu. Oh, sana, already I'm itching. <laughs> yes, I'm going to just say salamu. Parting, <laughs> I'm thinking of salamu. <laughs> anyway, um, I, I appreciate all the viewers who are watching me, and uh, I say that uh, thank you for listening to me, and I love you all. And remember that 
uh, what they say that uh, the doctor can say that God is the final answer, it is really true. I can, I can, I'm, I'm, I, I'm stand up to be guilty. And uh, another thing I'll say, I would like to, I would like to thank Tukuza Award crew. They are the ones who are behind my, my, my media tour. I really appreciate them and because of them, I couldn't be here. I didn't even know some things I'd done. Till now they came into my life. I really thank Tukuza Awards. I thank you so much. I thank you so much, Fix Media. I really thank you, Fix Production. And all in all, I thank you all mm -hmm. and for having me. I'm so humbled. And may God just bless you and be with you at every part of your need. Sing for us that Louis Lunge song, a part of it as we find uh, up. I actually <laughs> stand. <laughs> Don't go too far because no, of no, the no, mic. No. Mm. Uh -huh. mm. Sing, sing, some, sing a part Anything, I just, yeah. I don't have to go along, eh? No. Shibala nishimwa miwaria hata we injira eho shibala nishimwa miwaria hata we vula vu vuli za langa yesu 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 to have musical notes in me, but <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much. Thank, thank you, you, thank you. I'm thank humbled. you for making time. Thank Do you. not touch that dial. More is coming up. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah.